there are about 20 different interpretations of quantum mechanics that have some value. And that indicates that something is wrong. Would Einstein accept any of these? Pfft, no. He wanted to know about causality and non-locality. I think we need at least two new ideas. Like, what is the path to causality? Causality I think of in terms of light cones in space-time. In quantum mechanics, I never think about light cones in space-time. So in this talk, I will construct an explicit bridge to light cones using quaternions. Now, if that's a new number phrase to you, um, just think of it in terms of complex numbers, where instead of just having an i, there's an i, j, and k, all of which are imaginary. And the algebra is actually the same, except you get the bonus of getting cross products and curls. Now, a little while ago, someone sent me an email saying, you need to see, read this blog. It was by Scott Aronson, a global expert on quantum mechanics and quantum computing. And he's presented at Davios, which is actually an odd form of compliment. But this guy's a global talent, and he's super smart, super fast, super learned. Uh, and in December 18, his shuttle optimized what title was, Why Are Amplitudes Complex? Hmm. And this is what he wrote. But while I remain less than 100% satisfied about why complex numbers, why not just the reals, there's one conclusion that recent circling back to these questions made me confident about. Namely, quantum mechanics over quaternions is a flaming garbage fire, which would have been rejected at an extremely early stage of God and the angels' deliberations about how to construct our universe. To put it bluntly, Unless something clever is done to fix it, quaternionic quantum mechanics allows superluminal signaling. He's following Lord Kelvin's example, uh, who you called them an unmixed evil, this overly dramatic language of putting down uh, a technical tool, what I call uh, smear the quaternion. It's actually dull. Uh, let's, let's stay technical, please. Now, I am the owner of quaternions.com. And I agree with his assess assessment. The way Qu uh, Aronson uses quaternions for quantum mechanics is useless. Now, details matter. Use quaternions wrong, and they give the wrong answer. I call this approach pointing like a drunk. <laughs> Look, that, that does not work for the kind of precise measurements that are so well known for quantum mechanics experiments. It's time to do something clever. Point with precision quantum mechanics. Now, when experiments are done on light tables, well, the sensor is in an extremely precise location. The mass should reflect that. And here was my reply. Quaternions have as a subgroup the complex numbers. For this simple reason, they can be used to get every result ever created using complex numbers that can also be written using quaternions. Just pick a simple form of quaternions like AB00 or A0B0 and the rest can be done by a machine. A little bit more interesting is to pick a fixed multiple of the three imaginary numbers, say 0, 1, 2, 3. Everything done with complex valued Hilbert space can be done with point one way quaternion valued Hilbert space. There's just one trick one must use to reproduce all the results of complex valued quantum mechanics. Of course, the one direction is arbitrary, any will do. And the smart man replied quickly. <laughs> yes, it's evident that if we restrict ourselves to point one way uh, quaternions, then we will get back standard complex quantum mechanics. In such a case, I would say our theory simply was complex quantum mechanics. It's empirically indistinguishable from it, so by Occam's razor, that would tell you to cut all mentions of quaternions from your formulation of our theory. All right, great. He gets that it works, and he quickly dismisses this clever approach as just not interesting. 
Uh, you can never, of course, cut out all mentions of quaternions as they sit in the center of the standard model. Uh, this SU2 thing is, is also called the unit quaternions. Now, he returned to the failed approach by Adler from the Center of Advanced Study in Princeton. Adler wrote the book, Quaternionic Quantum Mechanics and Quantum Fields. Now, 560 pages. <laughs> Aronson got Adler to admit that his approach allows superluminal transfer of information. Why write the book? I mean, seriously. My mantra? Stay with something that works. Now, is it at all different? Well, think of an experiment on a light table. Say the detector is on, well, you're going to be arbitrary, call it the x-axis. And a grad student makes an upgrade to the detector and he puts it on the y-axis. Hmm. Now a mirror is put so that, you, so that no information is going along the x-axis, it's all going along the y. What does the theorist do? Well, with complex numbers, not a thing. <laughs> with Quaternion series quantum mechanics, he goes from A, B, 0, 0 to A, 0, B, 0. The calculations kind of end up with the same result. Now, the details of the experiment have changed. The details of the Quaternion series experiment calculation have changed along with the experiment. And nothing gets changed for the complex numbers. So, to me, you really want to very closely match what goes on with experiments. Point one way quaternions have a physical interpretation. They are three dimensions in space, and there are three imaginary dimensions in quaternions. The light cone can be directly represented using quaternions, and the same is not true for complex numbers. Quaternions have a home for time, x, y, and z. And they're just too big to fit into one complex number. Now, I did fail to communicate how this system works with the word dimension. Now, so we're going to think about a thing with like two or six dimensional states. Now, that, that is a state dimension, and then there's space-time dimension. So I would never use the word dimension without a qualifier. Each of these eight states has four space-time dimensions. One of these systems has two state dimensions and the other six state dimensions. Now what a conjugate does is a point mirror reflection in space. So if you have your fingers here like this and you do a point reflection around here, that would be up is down, left is right, near is far. Now there is a test of Bell's inequality called the CHSH inequality. I used my start with AB00 and with some work got the correct results. I was able to do the quaternion generalization uh, with a norm normalization factor changes, changing, but, and it's important, it wasn't exactly identical. It was close. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it works. So I really think in order to understand quantum mechanics, you have to move from the completely abstract, what is a complex number physically, to quaternions, because then you can get your light cones with time and x, y, and z. But that doesn't answer the question about quantum mechanics being non-local. Okay, so actually this t-shirt uh, covered with light cones uh, is, is the way I understand it. So all of God's physics happens in space-time, where space is a number, and I'm actually explicitly rejecting um, the long-term value of adding more dimensions or a multiverse. Now Newton, he thought he might just know everything, <laughs> but he actually only uses a very thin slice of Minkowski space-time. He used the, yellow, the part right next to the axis, blocked, uh, most of the area being blocked out. And in relativistic physics, causality only resides in the past light cone. The results show up in the future light cone. Yes, there is the space-like regions, but it can't be involved with causality. 
So where is quantum mechanics on the Minkowski space-time diagram? It's a question that's usually never asked, which is too bad. <laughs> it has to be somewhere. I also call it Bell's future quantum mechanics. Um, and it's just that quantum mechanics covers the other half of the Minkowski space-time diagram. It's important to note that the observer is at the origin, zero, 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 zero. Not only is he at the origin, he's stuck there. <laughs> you always end up being here now. I know people like to draw a line on this. They say that's the world line and it moves from zero, 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 but observers do not. They recreate space-time every moment. My hypothesis is that for quantum mechanics, all events that are involved are space-like separated from that observer at zero, 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 zero. That bars information from those events getting to the observer. Barred. What to do? <laughs> what to do? The barred information is used to calculate the odds of future interactions here. Notice the link between probability and location. Probability without an explicit location is meaningless. It's just always been zeros, always been here, and always been ignored. A complex valued Hilbert space is enough for 1D space. It is not big enough for 3D space time we live in. One needs a quaternion valued space for 3D space time. All of quantum mechanics has to be rebuilt. And that's not going to be an easy thing to sell. So those are the two ideas. Going from complex numbers to quaternions so we can have a light cone. And then using the area outside the light cone because those are going to necessarily be space-like separated. And space-like separated regions will be non-local as we have to be to be consistent with Bell's theorem. Thank you very much. Postlude. So how was the New England American Physical Society Spring 2021 meeting? It's Spring 2021. The COVID rules are still in place. This was a virtual meeting. This was just one morning contributed talk section scheduled to be a little bit over an hour. The first three of six speakers had already bailed. Not a good sign. There were about eight older guys in a Zoom room. We started at 1036 for the three that weren't there with a video by somebody who also was not there. It was seismic waves through teeth, not my kind of thing. And it didn't even fill up the time slot. But we waited for my talk at 1048. 12 minutes later. I, it used to be that the time slots were 12 minutes for speaking and then three minutes for questions. And I was told specifically to make a 12 minute presentation, but I exceeded that by all of 15 seconds. The person running the meeting um, was watching the video and stopped at exactly 12 minutes, preventing the people from watching those last 15. And the final vi video actually looked like it was going to go on for 18 minutes, <laughs> but it was shut down at 12. At least the person running the meeting was consistent. And then he ended the Zoom meeting. Three videos, no discussions, and done. I only realized later that I should have said something like, can we just hang out in the Zoom room and like we were going to go get coffee and donuts and just chat? I knew I could have asked a few good questions of the last speaker, and I would have been interested in any feedback from anyone who had listened to my spiel. So, like, why do I put effort into these meetings? Well, I want to find out why my idea is wrong. If I can do that, I'd write it up as clearly as possible and then prevent the next person from going down an errant path. Those challenges to my ideas happen during casual conversations. And that just didn't happen. 
So I really think uh, that's probably going to be my last virtual meeting, which is okay, because I hope we no longer do these kinds of things. Now to make this 12 minute time constraint, I cut out a story about Aronson. He had a horrible experience with another guy use, who used quaternions, one Joy Christian. Christian did a Bell's inequality calculation using quaternions. He did not use my approach of first doing using quaternions of the form AB00 and then generalizing with the point with precision kind of way. He did his own way and he didn't get the right answer. He still believes it's the right answer, but several very technical people pointed out specific places where Christian had Aaron aired. And Aronson also was very explicit about where Christian had like multiple mistakes and got into a really unpleasant struggle with Aronson on Aronson's blog. I think it kind of biased him against uh, that particular math tool. But here's the thing. Like any math tool, quaternions can be used to make crap. <laughs> and that's all that Chris Christian did with Bell's inequality. That's also what Aronson did with quantum mechanics that allows superluminal information transfer. Both Christian and Aronson don't know how to work with quaternions. It's an acquired skill. Aronson was shown the right way. He even knew it would work. And yet he wanted to discuss the thing that actually all agreed was crap. But here is the lasting benefit of making this presentation. Clarity is darn hard to come by. I can see clearly that I'm bringing two new ideas to understanding quantum mechanics. First, one needs quaternions instead of complex numbers to connect to 4D light cones. Light cones are the foundations of understanding causality. The second idea is to realize that quantum mechanics uses events outside the light cone. Those space-like events can tell the observer at the origin nothing about here now. Instead, the space-like information is used to calculate the odds of very specific types of interactions happening to the observer in the future here. And that is Bell's future quantum mechanics interpretation. Thank you very much.